Hi, Sophie here. Welcome back to my channel. So this is just gonna be a chatty video today, which means we're gonna be a little more cozy. I have various hot beverages to choose from. So today I'll be talking about my process making this painting. It's a personal piece, totally just for fun, just a fun creature design that I wanted to make and a nature journal page to go with it. This is actually an elephant armadillo hybrid for no reason except someone suggested it on Instagram. If you're able to support me on Patreon for just $3, then you'll be able to download my blend file of this piece, see a real-time version of the painting process in full, and be able to check out some of the anatomy studies that I did in preparation for this piece and the research and resources that went behind creating it. So the theme for this video is creating with limitations. This is something that I've heard other artists talk about that really resonated with me. And perhaps one of the most well-known examples of creating with limitations is having a color palette. Limiting the colors that you have to use tends to make for stronger pieces. Maybe you have a color swatch that you pick from, or maybe you're sticking to two to three main hues. Looking at this piece in retrospect, it looks to me like the color palette is mainly comprised of purple, orange, and green, which is interesting because these are all complementary colors, and so technically that's a triadic color palette. But perhaps even more interesting is that I did not make this piece with that in mind, I did not set out with a color palette to make this piece. So how did I end up with one? So here is my blend file. So in previous videos, I've talked about when I use colors in my piece, I'll tend to add them to the bottom of my color palette. So eventually I have a set number of colors and then I keep going back to them. But in this case, so this is the default grease pencil color palette. And below this, these are colors that I have added myself, but they, they come preset in my personal 2D animation starter file. So really the only colors that I added were, were just some blues because I wanted to reuse those specific colors. But for the entire process of painting this piece, the entire grease pencil color palette was fair game. Nothing was off limits. Well, we actually have grease pencil materials to thank for this. The topic of many a video of mine, grease pencil texture fill materials. With every piece I make, they become just, I just love them more and more. And this piece is no exception. So my first dozen materials are the ones that I have preset in my default starter 2D animation file. They all include a stroke material, and so some of them have gradient fills in addition to the stroke material. There's one 100% fill material. And then there are some with textures. And so these are all materials which fully become whatever grease pencil color that I am using. And so if we go into the fill material, that means that the blend value of the texture or of the gradients is at one. It's all the way up at one. I have a signature material that we don't talk about because I really hate signing my name. <laughs> After that is uh, this material that I created for the muscles just to, to have some cool striations in the muscles and to make for what I think are some pretty lovely muscle diagrams. Next are six stamp materials. So these are used mainly at the beginning stages of this piece to quickly fill out areas and to add some initial visual interest. I think we can all acknowledge that the blank canvas is really scary. And so I like to just get some stuff onto the canvas, really almost anything, to fill up my scene as quickly as possible. I really like kind of messing up a piece and then fixing it, finding my painting within that mess, rather than set out to create something nice from the start. And so this last one is actually a shell texture that really doesn't even follow the form very well and it's not a very accurate texture. I was gonna say not good, but it served its purpose. Because again, things can be fixed, things can be finalized, but having this initial very rough indication of, text of shell texture, having that within seconds, that was really helpful for me. But then we have the big four. These are the texture materials that I made the most use of. If I hide them, you'll see that really not much of the painting is left. Most of what remains is those 
extremely initial strokes. And actually, what is very cool, so I noticed this as I was planning this video, but what we do get if we make each material visible again, one at a time, we get the orange part of the color palette, we get the green part, the purple part, and then this material is a bit of a mix of all three. It's just a dark blue purple color that I used for the shadow areas of most of the piece. So I think we can safely say that it is thanks to these materials that we have a color palette. So here is what each material's fill texture looks like. So again, I was not thinking color palette when I chose these. So I added the gold texture first because this is one of my favorite texture materials. It's so beautiful and I'm just such a fan of gold. But I knew I wanted the bodies of the armored elephants to be a warm color, not too bright or dark, and so that's why I chose this texture. Next, I picked this dark texture color, which definitely has a lot going on in it. Too much going on in it. I'll talk about what the heck at the end. These are just, this was just a personal piece that I was working on, and I really enjoy sometimes working with textures that don't seem like they should work. It's just, it's a fun part of the process for me. So I added this as a highlight color a little bit later. And so the main reason that I chose this green was, well, for one thing, I was using this image as my color inspiration. And so I did want to give the armored parts of the elephants a gradient that would go from blue to yellow green. But the reason that I chose this yellow green as the lightest color of my piece actually had to do with the composition of the piece itself. So for me, the heart of this piece is this little munchkin right here. That's where I wanted the eye to be drawn to. That's where I wanted the focal area of this piece to be. I actually have some other areas of the piece, some sort of curved lines throughout the piece, which are all meant to draw us back into this area. But another way that I created this focal area was with the differences in values. So I realized pretty early on that since the mom's legs were going to be so deeply in shadows, that this would be the perfect opportunity to make the baby's head pop out by making it very light in values compared to the shadows behind it. And since I wanted the face and the trunk areas to be green, and I wanted this area to be the lightest, it just made sense for me to choose a texture color that was a very light green. And then because I think, like I talked about, limitation is good, I decided that I would use this for the highlight color all throughout my piece. And then this was the last texture that I added quite late into the process. Initially, I had wanted something quite dark for the sky area, and I wanted it to have some kind of watercolor texture. You can see that this is the only texture material that doesn't cover the whole area. There's a bit of watercolor transitions into nothingness so that we could have these areas of watercolor texture. I also wanted, in general, just a shadow color that was a bit less busy than this first one. Don't get me wrong, this texture material served me extremely well, but it was, it was a lot to make work and especially the further I got in the rendering process the less helpful that it was. Now often in the past when I would add colored textures like this I would have the blend value be all the way down at zero. This means that the vertex colors I used, the colors from the color palette that I picked, would not affect the fill material at all. All that we would see was the color of the texture. What I would do to counterbalance this is that I would have textures like this which are just black and white textures with the blend value all the way up at one so that they would be fully affected by vertex colors. But in this case, each of these four materials has a blend value that's a bit less than the halfway point, meaning that vertex color does affect the texture color, but that overall the texture color it has more of a say in the matter than the vertex color does. And so since while I was talking we went to one end of the extreme, I'm curious what would happen if we took away the texture color completely. I don't really know what this says about my painting process, but I still find it super interesting to compare the two extremes. And I definitely like, well, obviously I like the original values better because I created intentionally with those values in mind. So I think having the blend value somewhere in the middle 
which again is something quite new that I'm trying. Uh, this is really special because this I can with this I can control how the color shows up. So now I'll draw each of these materials with a vertex color of a different hue. So despite having now a full rainbow of all of these different materials, we still kind of have that same original color palette that I talked about. We're mainly getting oranges, purples, and greens, albeit of varying saturations and varying values, varying dark and light values. But these materials also all have a stroke, and the stroke itself is just fully a vertex color. I actually didn't while I was planning this, I didn't experiment what it would look like if there were no uh, stroke materials as part of my piece. Wow, the strokes add a lot. Okay, what about only stroke material? Again, I have no idea what this says about my process, but I quite enjoy looking at it. But yeah, I think this combination of stroke and fill is just so much fun to work with. I can brush in areas, I can scribble if I want the vertex color to have a larger impact, or I can make big shapes and press lightly to have the fill material be the one having more of an impact for that particular stroke. And indeed, I am able to find every color of the rainbow within this piece. We can indeed find yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, and green, all represented. But we still have a color palette because I did not limit what colors I used, but I did heavily limit my material use. Which isn't to say that one type of limitation is superior over another type. Rather, I think experimenting is fun and exciting and this was something different that I tried that I really was really happy with the results. So before we finish up, I also did briefly want to share this dark material because I also tried something new for that material, which again, quite delightful. Maybe you've noticed it in the piece. I think it's most obvious here. Too obvious? Not for a personal piece that really doesn't matter too much. But if you zoom in, we see them a lot more. These multicolored dots, kind of like birthday cake sprinkles or sparkles in the darkest areas of the piece, because this was a fill texture that I would use for the dark areas of the piece. And I think it's just, it adds a little bit of magic. It's not too overbearing when you look at it zoomed out, which is how most people will see this piece, but it still, it still adds something. So this is an effect that I added very easily in Krita. So I have a whole video about making repeating textures using Krita, if you would like to see. And so in this case, I'm just gonna open up one of my repeating fill textures that I've created. And so in this case, I just added a noise filter, drop the level, very much, almost as low as it can go. And then, okay, that's that's it. And so when I first tried this, I was actually so excited by this and I thought it was so cool that I actually did the same thing. I added the same noise filter to my light material. You can barely see them. It did not have the same effect whatsoever. This is definitely something that works mainly for dark texture fill materials. And once again, if you're able and willing to support me on Patreon, that really helps a lot and you get access to the to this blend file so you could see and use these texture fill materials for yourself. I hope that this was a helpful look into my process. If it was, you can like the video, subscribe for more chats about grease pencil, and you can also follow me on social media. I am Sophie Jantak all over the internet. All right, thank you for watching. I appreciate you, however you choose to support me. I will see you very soon. Take care, goodbye.